After describing the construction of everything the Lord had commanded, the coverings, the structure, the veil, the furniture, and the court, Bezalel and Aholiab pause in their labors and we read, quote, this is the inventory of the tabernacle. See Exodus 38, 21 to 31. What a lot of work and what a wealth of material. There were 29 talents plus 730 shekels of gold, 100 talents plus 1,775 shekels of silver, and 70 talents plus 2,400 shekels of bronze or copper. Adam Clark says the gold for the holy place weighed 4,245 pounds. The silver of the tabernacle weighed 14,602 pounds, and the bronze or copper came in at 10,277 pounds troy weight. That's over 10 tons of metal for the project. No wonder we read, thus they plundered the Egyptians, Exodus 12:36. Payment in full for centuries of forced labor, or as the Lord would express it, I gave Egypt for your ransom, Isaiah 43, 3. Say, my friend, do you have any idea how much the Lord gave for your ransom to be your savior? Have you taken inventory of your soul? The creator must put himself into his creature's hands and allow them to murder him. The heir of all things must leave all his wealth to others. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator, Hebrews 9, 16. Quote, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Here is the question each one must answer, quote, do you despise the riches of his goodness forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Romans 2, 4. Do you? Remember, God already had a glorious mansion in heaven. Why also a tent? It was so he could live among his people, camp style. And the cost of it was not to be figured only in gold and silver. There was the cost of commitment on the part of the workers. It isn't hard to see the theme in these verses. Quote, whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring an offering to the Lord. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing. And they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle. They came, both men and women, as many as had a willing heart and all the women whose heart stirred with wisdom spun yarn of goat's hair. And he has put in Bezalel's heart the ability to teach in him and in Aholiab, the son of Ahissamach of the tribe of Dan. Then Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred to come and do the work. Exodus 35, various verses, and chapter 36, verse two. Heart, that's the secret ingredient in our service for the Lord. Yes, they needed the materials generously given. Yes, they needed wisdom and skill to do the work, but heart, that makes all the difference. It turns labor into a labor of love. They were wise-hearted and willing-hearted and whole-hearted. When the Apostle Paul describes how Christians work today in building a dwelling place for the Lord, he puts a whole chapter right in the middle describing the character of love, 1 Corinthians 13. This is what God is longing for. When my children were little, it was not their gift wrapping skills or artistry on their cards that thrilled me. I was unwrapping love and could see their hearts on those cards better than any professionally designed 
commercially made greeting card. Nonetheless, the following chapters, Exodus 36 to 38, showed that the work was done, was followed exactly according to the pattern given to Moses. Love and obedience make a beautiful marriage in our hearts. <laughs> 